Thank you for joining with us as we worship the Lord together on this fourth Sunday in Advent, the Sunday before Christmas. And we pray even that as we focus in on, on the angel appearing to Mary, that we would be aware just of the Lord speaking and ministering into our lives, helping us to connect with him, helping us to respond to him and to commit our lives to living for him. We begin with a verse from Isaiah 40, which tells us the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all people will see it. And we realize that at Christmas time, the glory of God was revealed through the coming of his son into the world. And we pray that as we worship God today and as we look forward to worshiping him over this Christmas season, that we would have a fresh understanding of his love for us and his desire for us to know him to know him uh, as Emmanuel, God with us. Let's pray. Father, as we meet together today, we ask that your spirit really would be present with us, speaking and ministering into our lives. Uh, we focus in on Mary today. We pray that you'd speak to us through your word. Be with us as we worship. Be with us as we pray. Be with us as we hear your word. Uh, and Lord, just by your spirit, minister to us, not just today, but day by day and help us to continue to engage with you uh, throughout this coming week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. confess our sins together. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed. 
through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. And so, Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect for this, the fourth Sunday of Advent season. God, our Redeemer, who prepared the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of your Son, grant that as she looked for his coming as our Saviour, so we may be ready to greet him when he comes again as our Judge, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen and the collect for this Advent season. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armor of light, now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son Jesus Christ came to us in great humility, that on the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The first chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the 39th verse. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favoured that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever even as he said to our fathers. This is the word of our Lord. Let's pray together. Father, thank you that your word is a light to our feet and a lamp to our path. We pray that your spirit would be our guide as we study your word. Speak to us, we pray, as we listen to your voice and bring the seeds of your word to life in us that we might bear your fruit and be transformed into the likeness of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. I've spent a few summers volunteering in Malawi with Habitat for Humanity, helping to build homes as part of Habitat's work there. Each summer I was in a different village, building different relationships with different families, building community with different Malawian communities and working on building different homes. But one thing was the same each year I visited, though it never failed to be a truly overwhelming experience. On the first day of on-site orientation, when everything was new to us, our team bus would travel along this dusty road to a Malawian village. And every year, we would hear our welcome before we saw it. A whole village would emerge from these tiny houses. A whole host of people would erupt in song. They would see the dust from our bus on the horizon, and everyone would come out to celebrate, to welcome us in song and in dance. 
People in Malawi have such a gift for celebration. Their joy was contagious and we were caught up in it. They didn't mind that we didn't look like builders that we were there to build. They didn't mind that we couldn't dance, that we didn't know the words of their songs. They just wanted to express their joy. They sang songs of thankfulness, songs of praise, songs of hope. Their joy at our arrival and the hope it symbolized to them just overflowed into beautiful acts of joy-filled celebration. And this is what we get a glimpse to in our reading from Luke's Gospel today. Day. Joy overflowing into spontaneous response, not at the arrival of unqualified builders, but great joy, unshakable joy in response to the good news of the arrival of the Lord Jesus Christ. Scripture today invites us to get caught up in celebrating the coming of the King who was born in a manger. Joy to the world, the Lord is come, let earth receive her King. But to understand the depth of this earth-shaking, history-altering, life-changing joy, we need to put today's passage in context. At this time of Israel's history, God has been silent for hundreds of years. Though it's only a page in our Bibles, years and years pass between the book of Malachi, which closes the Old Testament, and the Gospels, which open the New Testament. In the Gospel of Jesus Christ, all of a sudden, God is at work again. A woman named Elizabeth, who did not expect to have children, has been told that she will have a son who will be a joy and delight to his parents and whose birth will cause many to rejoice. This child, who will be called John, will make ready a people prepared for the Lord. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's unexpected pregnancy, an angel appears to an ordinary girl named Mary and gives her extraordinary news. The angel says that the Lord is with Mary and that she will give birth to a son named Jesus who will be the son of the Most High, a king of an everlasting kingdom. The Lord is at work and those who respond in faith and in obedience are caught up in this great work. These two women, Mary and Elizabeth, are at such different stages of life, yet they are united together by their faith in God. Their stories are told together today because they are caught up in the greatest story ever told. They are caught up in the good news that will cause great joy for all people. We pick up this good news story in verse 39 of Luke chapter 1. The angel told Mary that her relative Elizabeth is going to have a child, and the fact that Elizabeth is already far through her pregnancy is confirmation of the truth of God's word. The angel said, no word from the God will ever fail. It is proven in Elizabeth's pregnancy. It will be true of Mary's, and everything that has been spoken about Mary's child will also be true. God is faithful. His word is sure and certain, and he is doing a great thing in the sending of his son. Believing everything that she has heard, Mary hurries to see Elizabeth, probably excited to exchange these stories. They have both heard from an angel, they are miraculously pregnant, and they are witnessing firsthand to this new thing that God is doing in and for the sake of the whole world. But Mary doesn't even get a chance to share her news. As soon as she greets Elizabeth, Elizabeth's baby jumps for joy. Just as those Malawians watched for dust rising up on the road, and this, at the sight of the distant cloud they leapt out of their houses and erupted in songs of joy, so Elizabeth only needed a glimpse of Mary. She only needed to hear the sound of Mary's greeting before the baby in her womb leapt for joy. This baby, whose name will be John, has been sent to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. This baby is already at work. The past couple of weeks, we have heard what John's ministry becomes. His is the voice crying out in the wilderness, the voice calling people to repent and to bear fruit in keeping with repentance. But even here, even in his mother's womb, John's ministry is beginning. So great is the work that God is doing. 
Elizabeth, hearing Mary's greeting, feeling her baby move, believes in the fullness of what is happening. And this faith-filled response opens her to an outpouring of God's Holy Spirit. This is the gift to all who believe in the Lord, and this gift of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit results in pure joy. Verse 42, Elizabeth exclaims, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. She recognizes the unique role that Mary has been given. She recognizes the unique baby who Mary will carry. She recognizes her role and her place in the story she is caught up in. And Elizabeth's joy is uncontainable. She does not restrain it, but cries out, Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill her promises to her. These blessings don't bestow anything. Elizabeth is not the one acting in blessing Mary, but she is, through eyes of faith, proclaiming what God is doing. These blessings are exclaimed in recognition of the work of God. God is the one pouring out his spirit. God is the one blessing his people. God is doing a new thing. He is at work in, through, and for his people. And the only response, the only thing we can do in response to being caught up in this work, the only response to seeing, hearing, recognizing God at work is joy-filled faith. This is what Elizabeth and Mary model for us today. This is what we are invited to partake in today, joy-filled faith. Just as John leaps for joy and Elizabeth responds by recognizing God at work and by exclaiming with unbridled joy, so Mary, from verse 46 onwards, cannot contain her song of joy and praise. These words have been said and sung for generations because they so beautifully capture the nature of the kingdom and the character of God. This song is a kingdom manifesto, a proclamation of good news, a song of praise, a song that glorifies the Lord. These words are found in Mary's lips, but they're easily adopted into our vocabulary. This song proclaims that all, all that God has done and is doing and will do. This is a song that celebrates God as Lord and Saviour, powerful and mighty, holy, merciful and faithful. These things are fundamental to the character of God. This is who God is. And when we understand these great truths about God, everything changes. Our God far surpasses expectations. One writer said this, the Magnificat reverses all protocol and expectations. God who is high becomes low. He sees human need and initiates a revolution that reorders reality. The transcendent God intercedes on behalf of a lowly young woman and calls her blessed. The Almighty gives mercy to those who fear him and scatters the strong, proud and rich while filling the hungry and needy with all good things. The language and imagery of this song incorporates things religious, social and political. When God works, everything is transformed. When the kingdom comes, physical and spiritual realities are remodeled to align with God's creative purposes. God is making all things new, and this is not a disembodied statement, but a great truth embedded and embodied in every part of life. Nothing is untouched by the work of God and his coming kingdom. This is beautifully revealed to us in the Incarnation. This song of Mary's anticipates all that Jesus' ministry will hold. God breaks into the world in the unlikely form of a baby. The kingdom is glimpsed in the interactions between Jesus and humanity. The king is crowned and the kingdom inaugurated not by power and might, but through the humiliation and the unlikely victory of the cross and resurrection. The lost, the least, the lowly are raised up. The first are last. Those who lose their life gain it. The ordinary are invited by grace through faith to embrace the extraordinary titles of children of God and co-heirs with Christ. This is truly an upside down kingdom in which we by faith are invited to take our place. And as we walk by faith, our eyes are open to the reality that in the upside down kingdom, things are actually the right side up. 
God is making and remaking the world as it was always meant to be. Mary sees through eyes of faith. Mary sings of a God who sees us and is at work to make his kingdom come on earth as in heaven. Today, as we approach Christmas and celebrate once again the birth of Jesus, the saviour of the whole world, we are invited to make this song our own, to proclaim with a rejoicing spirit that our God saves. Our God has done great things for us and holy is his name. And in making Mary's song our song, in following the example of Elizabeth and leaping for joy like John, our joy is complete. This is what scripture invites us to do today, to see and to hear the good news of great joy afresh this Christmas and to respond with joy-filled faith. There is great joy in believing the one who has promised has come. The long-awaited king was born in a manger. In Jesus, we see the fullest, purest, most beautiful fulfillment of the words of Mary's song. God has done an unexpected thing in sending his son, that great king who left his throne, who humbled himself to the point of death, who went hungry in the wilderness in order that we might be fed with the bread of life. In Christ, who is great David's greater son, all of God's promises are yes and amen. There is great joy in believing that this is the King above all kings, that Jesus Christ is Lord. This joy animates our Christmas celebrations. This joy overflows into celebration, generosity, hospitality, friendship and community. This is a joy that the world cannot take away. This is what we long for in the very depths of our beings. Joy that we cannot fully express. Joy that is glorious. Joy firmly founded on God's saving work in Christ. The King and his kingdom have come and are coming. And one day our joy in him will be full, complete and everlasting. Let's pray. Father, give us souls that glorify, spirits that rejoice in you because we have a great saviour. Father, thank you for all you have done and are doing. Help us to hear afresh the good news of great joy this Christmas. And in Christ, may our joy be complete and our lives a witness to the joy he brings. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our saviour, who has come and who is coming. Amen. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive our King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven nature sing. Joy to of his love, the wonders, wonders of his love. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, today, as we've been thinking about the angel appearing to Mary, we thank you for her willingness to fulfill your will. Give us and others the same attitude and willingness to respond to you. Open our ears, our eyes, our minds, our hearts and our lives afresh to you as we prepare to celebrate the birth of Jesus, the coming of the Son of God into the world. May the news of great joy for all people stir our imaginations, increase our understanding of the great truth that a Saviour has been born. 
May the Christmas story resonate with new meaning in people's lives and may your kingdom grow and flourish. We praise you for the wonder of your love and for the supreme demonstration of that love in Jesus Christ, the one who came. And the one who through his death and resurrection has made it possible for people to know forgiveness of their sin and a restored relationship with you as they turn to him and put their trust in him. Heavenly Father, we pray for the people of the world and the nations of the world, for those who are being overwhelmed by need, famine, war or natural disaster, for those who are being persecuted for their faith in you, and for all whose lives are being impacted by the current pandemic. Give insight, wisdom and integrity to those in leadership. We pray for the Prime Minister, the Cabinet and Government, for the Executive and the Assembly. Guide and sustain all who provide care and support to those who are ill, to those involved in providing essential services, and those involved in the vaccination process. And help us all to act wisely and responsibly as we seek to limit the spread of the virus. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those who are ill, those who are physically ill, those who are emotionally ill and, and stressed and weary, we pray for those who are bereaved, for those for whom this season increases their sense of isolation, those struggling with advancing years, with disability, with poverty, with abuse, with anxiety, with uncertainty, with disappointment, those struggling with school or work or unemployment. By your Spirit, minister into lives, bringing healing, help and hope, comfort, guidance and encouragement. So Lord, today we offer you our thanks, our praise and our prayers. In Jesus' name, Amen. And in a moment of quiet then, we take a moment to offer our own thanks to the Lord, to bring our own request to him. Merciful Father, accept our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And the blessing, Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you, gladden your hearts and scatter the darkness from before you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. And then just in terms of announcements to remind you of Carols by Starlight on Tuesday evening at 7. We'd love to see you there. Do tell others and invite them to come along. And there's more information about that on the Christmas card and the letter that I'm going out or on the parish website as well. And then, of course, looking forward to Christmas Eve. There's service on Christmas Eve uh, at 11.30 in the evening. And the services on Christmas morning at 8.30 at 10 in St. Patrick's and then uh, at 10.30 here. Uh, as well and the services are at the same time on Boxing Day as well.
So may the Lord bless you, keep you until we meet again.